Hello and welcome to another 3D printing video. Today we're going to be making Gore's Necro Sword from Thor Love and Thunder. So this is my vow. Oh God, she will die. The sword was printed in seven parts on my Creality CR10 and as always the file will be linked in the description. To finish the sword we will be using some new but still relatively simple techniques so let's get started. Alright, we will be starting by joining all four pieces of the blade together. To ensure that all pieces line up properly, there's a groove that goes down the length of the sword. I've chosen to use three 1 8 metal rods to make up the width of that groove. You could also use flat bar, but my local home improvement store did not have the correct sizes. I've also labeled these two nearly identical pieces to help me remember where each piece goes. I'd say these other two pieces are pretty easy to tell apart. We will be relying on Gorilla Glue to help us bond this blade together. We did label some parts, but prior to gluing, still make sure that you are putting everything on correctly. All you need are a couple dabs of glue and then hold everything together for about 60 seconds and you shouldn't have any issues. And then just repeat those steps for the last three pieces. Now even though the rods are there to help you align everything, you still may have to play around with a few pieces just to make sure it all lines up perfectly. Now for everybody's favorite part, sanding. We're going to be using this Bondo glazing and spot putty to eliminate the gaps that were left after we glued all the pieces together. Once we let the Bondo dry, we're going to use 180 grit sandpaper to smooth it all back down. You will probably need two to three applications of this, so we're going to go ahead and apply one more coat and then repeat the steps and see where we're at after that. We could probably stand to do one more pass with the Bondo, but first we're going to sand the entire blade with this 80 grit and then 180 grit sandpaper. Before we move on to the entire blade, we really just need to give these two areas a little bit of a cleanup real quick. All we're really trying to do is build up the layers a little bit so down the line everything seems uniform. So let's just give these two areas a little bit of attention real quick. Like I had said, we're really just trying to build up layers here so apply, let dry, and apply again. Alright, so just like before, just apply super generous amounts all over the blade and just go over the whole thing, making sure to cover the entire area. The 
it seems like a good time to mention that these steps need to be followed with the other parts of the sword as well. We will be using this Krylon 2-in-1 primer just to help us eliminate any further layer lines. As always, we're doing two light coats followed by two heavy coats. At this point, it's really just about sanding, priming, filling, priming, sanding, so on and so on until you're happy with the finish. For the paint, I considered several different colors. I wanted to try and stay as true to the film as I could. The first three I considered were this Rust-Oleum Silver, a Krylon Hammered Black, I used this color on my Boba Fett pistol and a Krylon gunmetal. I even considered using a graphite rub as a last resort. This is the same one I used on my Mandalorian Vibro Blade if you ever saw that video. The silver was too bright, the black was too dark, and the gunmetal was too metallic -y, if that's a word. The color I decided to go with is this Rust-Oleum Antique Pewter. And after I do some weathering to it, I think it's gonna look really good. We have a very tiny bit of assembly before we paint. We're gonna glue on the cross guard. And yes, I had to look that up. Like the blade, just hold for 60 seconds and you should be good. And now we move on to this antique pewter spray paint. And we want to be sure to get full coverage on the entire sword. And now we're gonna do a wash. I like to go about 60-40 in favor of water. And we just apply and then wipe it off. I thought it would be cool and add additional depth to the piece to incorporate a little bit of brown into the wash. Rather than wiping away, I kind of dab to kind of give more of a dirty look. And the last thing I did to bring out just a little bit more detail is use this silver rub and buff. brushed all the edges around the piece and then I used a bigger brush to kind of dry brush the details out a little bit more. And with that, now it's time for the final reveal. All right, so that would be it for this build. This is the first time I've ever done anything that needed to be joined together and have the seams hidden and all that good stuff. So it's enjoyable, a new challenge for me. If you made it to the end of the video, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you miss future videos just like this one. And thanks for watching. Bye.